guys welcome back to traditional jewish cooking or whatever we're calling it i don't even know yet anyway comment down below what we should call this so today we're not doing cooking we're doing baking i'm making challah so let's get started all right so we're starting with emptying three packages of yeast into this bowl and it's going to sit with some sugar and warm water warm water hint to those who don't know does not mean hot water I made that mistake several times and the dough did not rise at all. It was really bad because I killed the yeast by using hot water. So make sure it's a mix of cold and hot and then you'll have the yeast really, really good. I don't know, it will be good. Yeast, healthy yeast, living yeast. Okay, and now we're going to have this mixture sit in a warm area. So I'm gonna put it by the hot water burner. It's not that warm, but it's the warmest place here. Um, and we're gonna wait for it to bubble. When it bubbles, that's when we're gonna add it into everything that we're gonna put in here, starting with eggs. So a lot of people use real whole eggs, they crack them, whatever. I use egg beaters, uh, it, it tastes the same. Mm. All right, so it's five eggs, and now I have to do my fancy math thing, or I see that it says four egg whites, meaning, meaning, um, so I, that's two eggs, that's, a half a cup and then I have to so it's two eggs so that would be a cup would be four eggs plus four tablespoons so I don't know what math my mother just did but she just said to do a cup and a quarter so that's what we're gonna do so jokes we don't actually put the eggs in yet so we're gonna put them in that oh it's gonna wait over there and in the meantime I'm gonna put two cups of sugar and as well as you always have to read the directions oil salt and boiling water boiling water this time not warm water two cups of sugar so this is a third of a cup which means six of these and the worst thing that could happen when you're cooking is to lose track like baking whatever and that was five if i'm wrong about that comment below but i'm pretty sure that was six mother would absolutely kill me for using this which is supposed to be for dry ingredients but the wet ingredient thing is kind of occupied with the eggs so i'm using this and it's seven eighths which is basically almost a cup so i'm just gonna do two of these and then a little less than a third one of this this is a third of a cup as we said so this is two thirds and then we're gonna do slightly less there we go and that's about seven eighths for me, baking is all about estimating and it generally turns out fine anyway. Okay, and now we're gonna add five teaspoons of salt. This is a teaspoon, not a tablespoon. My mother one time accidentally read um, tablespoons and she added five tablespoons of salt. It was salty challah. Okay, and now we're going to add four cups, or not four cups, three and a half cups of boiling water. Um, and I had to empty this cup of the eggs just because there was no other safe way of doing this. Okay, and now it is time to add the yeast and the eggs. So first we're gonna add the eggs to the yeast because that's what the ingredients say. I mean the directions, not the ingredients, whatever. And now we're going to add <laughs> all of the It's okay, my camera woman is laughing because I'm just hilarious. Anyway, now we're adding the yeast to the rest of everything. And then we better mix it fast so that the eggs don't like scramble. So we're gonna add flour quickly so that the eggs don't scramble. Okay, so now I mix it a little bit and I tried to precariously balance the spoon, but it looks like we have a boat. Anyway, we're gonna add the flour now. So we're adding some whole wheat flour because it tastes better. We don't have that much, so it's mostly actually gonna be not whole wheat flour but you can add whole wheat flour. You can make it whole wheat, all whole wheat, mostly whole wheat, mostly not whole wheat, whatever you want. Honestly, it tastes the best when you have some whole wheat and I'm missing the thing a lot. I know that, don't worry about it, whatever. It tastes the best when you have most, um, like a mix of both, in my opinion, but that's my opinion. We need a total of three quarters of a bag of flour. Uh, over the we don't have to add it all now but over the course of this whole baking process it's going to end up being around that amount so we're going to add enough so that we can knead the dough 
and then once we're able to knead the dough, we can add more as as needed as we're kneading. All right, everybody. So now we're going to start kneading the dough. We're going to have to add flour sporadically as we need. Is that the right word? I think it's the right word. Um, and to knead, I'm going to put gloves on because, as you know, we're all used to putting gloves on nowadays. Anyway. Um, but it's also really good because it keeps the dough off your hands that way You just take the gloves off and the dough falls off in the garbage instead of having to clog up your sink when you wash your hands when you're done Which I have experience with so let me just say it's not fun um, And now we're gonna knead the dough as we are kneading I felt like I needed to talk about certain things So we're gonna talk about why we make kala, why we eat kala on Shabbos so we eat kala on Shabbos because of primarily because of the the story and the story of the Jews in the desert, when we were in the desert, Hashem sent down for us man, this manna from the heavens. And on Fridays, he didn't send any down on Shabbos, and he would send out a double portion on Fridays. We call that Lechem Mishnah, two breads. So we have a tradition that on Shabbos, we eat two loaves of, we have two loaves of bread for the Shabbos meal. So that's where we make challah. Um, to eat on Shabbos and the reason we call it challah is because of something we're going to do later on in the process before we shape the dough we're going to do something called the freshest challah which is separating of the challah we there are priests that worked in the temple and they would there were there's a baby in my house and there were 24 um and there were 24 gifts that you give the the priests so you would give them the first of your crop you would give them certain certain gifts and one of the gifts you would give them is your challah. What you would do is you would separate a certain amount of your dough and you would give it as a gift to your priests, the priests that work in the temple because they don't work their own fields because they're working in the temple instead. So we call it challah because actually the gift that you give them is called challah but we we end up calling just ended up being that we call the whole batch of dough challah so that's why we call it challah. I learned this little trick on the Great British Bake Off to tell when I'm done, and I'm not done yet, I can tell you that, because basically you'd have to hold up the dough and it shouldn't fall apart when you hold it up, and it's the window pane test where you could see through it without it ripping to pieces. So right now I can't see through it and it's ripping to pieces, so it's not done yet. All right, so we're just about done with the kneading process, and now we need to um, let it sit and rise. It doesn't look like much, but if Hashem is with the yeast, which hopefully he will be, it will rise and it will be big and puffy and I'm so excited to see it. So we'll see you in a few hours. We're gonna let it sit for about two hours with a wet cloth over it to help. So as you saw before, the dough was really small and now after rising for quite a while, the yeast made the dough really big. So it's very exciting. We have a lot of dough to work with. So now I'm going to punch down the dough. But before we shape the dough, we do the mitzvah of her brush's collar. All right, so now we're going to separate the challah, uh, which we spoke about before, where we're supposed to give it to a priest or a kohen, but for technical reasons, we don't actually give it to a kohanim nowadays, but there's still a mitzvah to separate the challah and dispose of it in a respectful manner. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm going to start shaping the challah. I'm going to do a standard three braid, which is something that you see very often when you see challah. It's a very traditional challah shape. And I'm very excited to make it because I can actually do this one because I practice on my hair. So hmm. it's very exciting. I should have braided my hair. That would have been like super sticky. So now we're just rolling out all of the individuals. Just, just be overcome with the adorableness of that baby in the background. Yes, that's fine. Mm. And you can ignore it. So now we have this. And now we're going to attach the pieces like this, like so, as they say. I, don't know that. I say that. And we're going to go one. If you've ever braided hair, it's exactly the same thing. Just don't get your hair in the collar. And I'm just going to put one over 
the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and then you just pierce it off at the end. Pierce it off, pinch it off at the end. Don't pierce it. I don't know what you pierce it with. And then we're done. You have a all right, so now we are going to make a four braid. I'm going to attempt a four braid anyway. So, actually when I looked up how to do it, it didn't seem to be that difficult, but I feel like I'm jinxing myself when I say that. So we're gonna do over, well really, when I say when I looked up, I mean my mother looked up and taught me how. Over, under, over. See, now it's not so easy because it's sticking to each other. Then we're going to do over again, under again, over. And now we're just going to pinch it all together. And look, we have a semi not disgusting four, though it's kind of disgusting here, but it's kind of pretty here. So we'll just focus on this part. Okay. All right. So now we have our hollows. They're all shaped and we're just going to let them sit here and rise for a little bit before we put them in the oven. Uh, and we're going to, oh, we're so excited for this belt. It smells so good. I'm so excited. Okay, some people coat them with egg beaters, or you could just use egg whites and coat it, and it gives like a glossy feeling to it. I kind of like the, the rusty, like with flour dusting on it. Like that just looks a lot more appetizing to me. So I'm not going to do that, but you could totally do that. And a lot of people do. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below about what other Jewish recipes you guys want me to try. And I'll see you next week.